uh, welcome the delegation from the department, uh, uh, MESA and DTA, and welcome uh, all our guests who might be part of the session. Uh, the meeting itself, uh, maybe before I make remarks, let me start with the, the uh, um, apologies, if there are any apologies, uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary. Good morning, everybody. Yes, Chairperson, there is an apology from Honorable Direko, she is on study leave. We also got um, notification that Honorable Brink um, is no longer an MP, is resigned from Parliament. So um, we have one member short on the committee and we will be getting a new member soon. And then these apologies from the Minister and the Deputy Minister Nkadimeng that won't be able to make the meeting. And then Deputy Minister Bapila will be joining the meeting later as he's still traveling from Eastern Cape. Thank you, person. Thank you very much. Um, any uh, introduction of the new member, if there's any? I think we did meet uh, I don't know which meeting was that uh, with the new member from DA. I don't know whether she he she was replacing uh, uh, Honorable Brink. Uh, any, but I'm sure they will they will introduce uh, the person if that happens. Any other apology, Honorable members? Honorable uh, uh, Bongani, uh, it's abbreviated, I see Bongani, the hand is up, Bongani Mchali. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, yeah, Chairperson, I'd like to turn an apology um, for our uh, CEO, uh, Mr. Ntanda Zovimba. Um, he, he is also traveling from the Eastern Cape, uh, but I will be representing him in the meeting and also presenting the report you know, on MISA. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, any further apologies? Uh, none. With that, then I think we all, uh, uh, DG. <clears throat> uh, morning, Chair. Oh. Good morning, person. Uh, 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 Honorable Kaba, uh, I recognize the uh, uh, DG first, and then I'll come back to you. Well, just uh, I want to say I met a doctor as we speak now. Uh, oh, okay. the, the network is very bad. Okay. I don't know what it is. Uh, I fell down. My knees is painful. No, noted, uh, Honorable Kabanjaba. Uh, Thank you. DG? No, good morning, Honorable Chairperson and to the Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to say, yes, I am in the meeting, but with very difficult network uh, issues, but I will do my best to stay in because I'm also out in the Eastern Cape and I hope I am audible. So with your permission, I also won't show my a picture due to network band. Thanks. It's, it's okay. <clears throat> uh, let's let's start the meeting. Uh, as you might be aware, we are the last portfolio committee uh, on the discussion of quarterly performance report of the department. Uh, municipal infrastructure support and Department of Traditional Affairs took place on the 31st of August uh, last year. The purpose of this discussion was to assess progress on the implementation of the department's NDT annual performance plans for the financial year ending on 31 March 
I lost you, Chairperson. Yeah, he's gone. Oh. Sabona we msima. Sabona we babu pumza no ba babu msima. Can I share the meeting? Can I share the meeting? Aye. 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 Why? Mam kalip. Iin. Iska chisa ko iska figi mam kalip sabu nenga suma. Comrades, physically. We don't support that IT. You see now. Hey, I know. You see, we support you. you. We support you. Important. Yeah. Why is still still we are still 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 <laughs> hey, my name, we have about Upe uh, Rageko. Oh, Mam Kize Utu Doctor. Utu Rako Ageko. I'll shoot us correct. Ubano, you know, I this is useless. We can't have a meeting without ministers and deputy ministers. Who's going to account? I shall correct. To accurate up, but if the minister, what is important? What is important is the quorum who are correcting the comrade team, sir. Ah, because the DA is not too short. I have to put. Ah, if the minister, the deputy minister, who bring who to account? Who bring who to move the board? Na pa uza ba ime? Eba. Eba win. Oh, win is wangu wem kalip. Look, I think it's nine o'clock. The chair's just been hit by a lot of shit. Yeah, man. I love physically. I'm calling for your phone. The 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 second and I'm. I am thirteen and I am even fourteen or fifteen or what or eighteen. I now you go. We are going. What one bit of the footing and Jebanning to a parliament and as versus the lap of Ganges office in less the department. I equal in that. Nam Kalipuan be. I was really locating out. Kurumas too much is a on a serious note. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, and if all the meeting in Kubamna, I want to have the apologies up there. Uh. And there, it, it's serious role players in this department. I mean, who's peace? Who's peace? There are species, yeah. So go and him, um, Kalip, and who's peace? Who's that, sir? Who's that? And the honorable Hunner of Art. Runa va. Um, Kalipis. Ikora meeting. Ilan den funu wi vangu. 
Yeah, but where is the chair? I pay, we can't. Who's way Lord Shetty? This is our team level. I'm back now. Sorry. No, I'm going to start the boy. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened. It's, it's not even load shedding. I think it's a technical problem. So I don't know where you are, but I was just uh, uh, preparing the uh, uh, department as well as MESA and uh, uh, DTA for presentation of the third quarter performance. And uh, so let me welcome uh, everybody. If there's any gap out of this break that I had, I see the many hands, but uh, uh, maybe let me take the hands uh, so that they can guide me because of the break. Uh, Honorable Brum Sima. Uh. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. I'm glad you are back. <clears throat> it's just a concern, not necessarily that uh, I, um, I want us to, it, well, it's something that I, 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 I want to request the meeting to look into the presentation uh, that are going to be presented into, into this meeting. For me, they are very important and they need um, role players of this department, honestly, to be part of this meeting. Now, on your, on your, on your, when you were giving an opportunity for us to do um, apologies, we have noted that um, there is an apology of the minister, apology for two deputy ministers. There is an apology of uh, the CEO of Mesa. There is an apology of uh, Honorable uh, um, Dereko. There is an apology of Mam uh, Honorable uh, Kaba. I don't see Honorable Peggy. There is an apology from, well, not necessarily an apology, but an information that says Honorable Brink is not a member of this portfolio anymore. A new member will be introduced. Now, I'm saying, Chair. Maybe in your guidance, please, uh, uh, you know, take us through whether we are were, were, were able to to then um, consume these reports, because the expectation is that after these reports have been presented, decisions must be taken. Now, I'm wondering if these role players are not here, if those decisions will be able to be implemented. It's just a concern. It, uh, uh, upon upon your 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 deliberations uh, as this committee will then be able to arrive at a decision but i'm just raising concern thank you thank you uh, honorable maybe let me jump the dg honorable kalip thank you yes honorable kalip She's gone. No, so, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. thanks, Chair. No, I want to say that I concur with what Honorable Simang is raising, Chair. First of all, we can't meet when the minister and the deputy ministers are not uh, present, as he was alluding to the fact that you are dealing with a very important part of the accountability of the department. And the second thing that I want to raise with you, Chair, last time when we raised our, some of the issues here, one of the proposals that I also make very concretely was to say, let us meet physically now. This community is very important. So you see what happened to you earlier on. You are saying that there's no load shedding, but you also to get disconnected. So please get us a feedback because I know some of the communities like Scopa and other communities now are meeting physical. And what also stopped us not to meet physical is this committee. And then thirdly, Chair, can you also elaborate if you are correcting here? even if you are correcting, but now the fact of the matter is that both the ministers, both the minister and the ministers are not here also to take up the issues that is they're supposed to take the issues. Please provide guidance, but I strongly propose that let us postpone this meeting to next week, and then we must convene this meeting um, physically, not through this Zoom, because this Zoom does not help anyone. 
but it also rendered this committee very useless. While this committee is very important, those are my issues, Chair. Thanks very much. Uh, I think out of uh, before I uh, out of the uh, statements that you have made, I think what is critical is uh, whether the meeting is correcting. Uh, maybe let's establish that uh, from the secretary. Uh, Chairperson, yes, yes the, the meeting, we have a quorum in the meeting. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay, then that clarifies that first one. <clears throat> now, the second one, uh, why I was reading the uh, 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 the, the, the statement uh, to welcome you to say we are focusing, getting briefing on the third quarter performance of uh, DCOG, MINSA, DTA. In other words, it's a meeting that uh, if we don't carry uh, on with it, it impacts on our program. By the way, it was postponed, I think, uh, last week. But now focusing on the uh, leadership of the department, I think uh, Honorable Bapela is said to be going to join the meeting later. And uh, in, in a sense, uh, I think in principle, we agreed uh, when we were saying, we, we did have this experience of uh, many apologies, especially by the leadership. Then we, we agreed to say, uh, if the one of the deputy ministers is there to lead the delegation, and I think the DG as well, because the DG is an accounting officer, and uh, I think the apology that talks about uh, uh, Honorable Bapela and uh, Mr. Vimba is saying they are going to join. They were on a flight. So hence, I would, I, would, I would suggest as much as is possible that uh, postponing this meeting is going to impact on our program. Uh, but like I'm saying, I, I think by the time we are coming to questions, if uh, Mr. or Honorable Bapela would not be part of the meeting, then we might have to take a decision at that stage. But if the meeting was not correcting, but now the meeting does correct, and the apology does not say uh, Honorable Bapela is not coming. Uh, he's coming, but he will be late. But by the time we want to discuss, I'm saying uh, then we will we'll take a, a stance at that a stage. I'm not sure if members uh, then would, would feel that I'm, I'm bulldozing them. In fact, the logistics, uh, 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 Honorable Kalipi, about uh, that we have discussed this thing of uh, meetings that must be physical and uh, we, we, there's a process underway to look into that. Uh, so it might as well be, uh, it might not be a condition for us to meet because there are many implications for physical meetings. Honorable Mkalip. No, Chair, what, what physical implications to meet physical? Because I don't agree with you, Chair. Last time we spoke about this thing, you promised that you are going to look at the matter and you are going to come back to us as members of committee. Because we feel strongly, very strongly, that the meeting of COCTA now must be convened physical. And it has been a long time when we raised this thing of meeting physical. And the response that you are telling us, Chair, is not convincing. You must take us through as your members of your committee to say, these are the challenges I have applied to the chairs of chairs and then I'm facing with these challenges. And then we can take it from there. But if you are just summarizing as if uh, it's still underway, it does not also give us a, a clear picture 
if we are going to be able to meet physical. The second issue that you are also taking to chairperson to say, if we have to agree to postpone this meeting, it would impact on us or on the program of the committee very badly. But what is the use to meet if there are no people who are supposed to give us answers? There's no use, especially the executive who's supposed to be here all the time. So meeting is, is just that we just want to go aboard in our meeting. We need also answers in terms of the implementing uh, of, 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 of the department. The department is going to come here, waffle, waffle as usual, and then they get out of with everything. And then there's no executive here. And then this thing that we'll have to hear from the minister, deputy minister, because of the flight, this meeting was communicated long time ago. And that also is not acceptable. It means this committee, uh, we are told by the executive instead of the committee holding accountable the, the executive. This is not acceptable, Chair. So this time as a committee, we must put our foot down and we must ensure that we are the committee of parliament and everyone is coming here to be accounting and we are representing the people and people want the answers. It can't be that you must be told by the executive. That what happened last time when we had a meeting and then the, the committee was left to come to a standstill while the deputy minister is taking a call from the minister. And again, we raised that sharply with no, it seems as if it's the other way around. In fact, it's not the committee uh, that is accountable to the executive, it's the executive that is accountable to the committee. So the sooner we realize that, the better check is in. So I'm pleading with you that let us take this committee serious uh, because it's not even about the committee itself, it's about the rules of parliament that is empowered the committees. It's about the poor people that are waiting to hear what is the role of court. And Chair, again, last week or last time when we met, we raised a very critical point to say, each time we have to meet with the department, even as we are dealing with this important task of the department, we have not met the department while the department here in this platform, which is the Parliament of South Africa, said they are going to call the committee and do the strategic workshop. You came last time, Chairperson, and then you said, you know, they have a very, a, a very packed program until the end of February. But there's no appetite from the executive to tell us when are we meeting with the department to outline things in terms of the capacity of the department itself. So, Chairperson, we don't want to do this because we are eating the time of the committee, but we have to raise this thing if the chairperson of this committee is not even getting time to take us through uh, in order for us to, to plan accordingly. You saw what I wrote on the group. Even the secretary of this committee does not take members serious now. We have to scream behind her to ask what is the update? What is the update on this thing? What is the update, Chair? So this thing must come to an end now, Chairperson. I'm pleading. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, uh, 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 Honorable Mkalip, uh, we, we agreed last time when we, uh, we decided to remain behind uh, that we must have a meeting that talks uh, that uh, is uh, for members only. Uh, that's where I thought I was going to give you feedback on some of the things that you have just raised. Uh, this was specific, it's presentations by DCOC, MESA and DTA. And uh, so on the other issues, I think we'll convene that meeting but uh, obviously we, 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 have, we, have, we, we, we have dealt with them and there is feedback that I'm supposed to give to you. That's correct. But I would, I would, I would uh, as indicated earlier, at the time when we must respond to questions, first I assume the DG is an accounting officer of the department. And at the time when we must raise questions and uh, any question for that matter will not limit, actually exercising oversight will not be limited by the fact that uh, the minister has apologized and uh, the other one would come late. Questions must be asked and questions must be responded to by members of parliament. And if they are not responded to, and I, I, I think we, we know what we should be doing. So I would suggest without uh, much ado now to ask uh, DG 
uh, of the cog to uh, 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 to present brief the department uh, uh, the portfolio committee in fact i'm trying to get to this thing that says we are the ones now who are seemingly answerable to the department the, the dg to introduce the program and the presentation dg now, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning to all the Honorable Members. I also um, greet uh, all our DCOG family, sorry, Cocteau family that is here uh, with us on the platform this morning. Um, Chairperson, we want to thank you firstly for affording us the opportunity to come and brief the Portfolio Committee as the Cocteau family on our quarterly three performance report for the 2022-23 uh, financial year. So I am joined by the um, team from DCOG or DDG, the CFO and the senior management, and of course, uh, the management from DTA, uh, the DG, and also the MISA colleagues. Honorable Chairperson and members, um, I wish to highlight to the portfolio committee that as DCOG, we had a total of 26 targets for the quarter. Um, and of those 26, uh, we had achieved uh, 20. So an overall achievement of 77%. Uh, for the quarter under review, <coughs> excuse me, there are two programs, namely administration and the National Disaster Management Center also achieved 100% um, of their targets. Uh, the institutional development program. Uh, why, why is it not flight at uh, this presentation? You can't see it. Apologies, Chairperson. Um, perhaps, Chairperson, with your permission, I was going to also then say, in case there are problems on my side, I would then request that the DDG for Corporate Services would then lead the presentation on the performance and that my CFO. Yes, we can see it now. Okay, Funa Neng would then lead on finance. Okay, so if it could be put into presentation mode. Thank you. Uh, can we then move to the next slide? Okay, so, so I described what the purpose is and I've just given an overview of our targets. And of course, part three will then be on our finances. So if we can move. To the next slide. If we can move to the next slide. Okay, so on the performance information, uh, if we could move to slide five. So this is what I was describing, Chair, that the department had a total of 26 targets for the quarter. And out of the 26 targets, we achieved uh, 20, which makes up 77% uh, of the two programs. Uh, the MDMC and the administration, we achieved 100% of our targets. Uh, and then in institutional development, we achieved 86%. And in the local government uh, sim area, we achieved 56% of the nine. So whilst we also then achieved 50% of the two targets for the CWP. So if you look at a quarter on quarter observation, uh, following um, the quarters, you can see that we've had a slight decrease in our performance from quarter one uh, to quarter two. So we're down uh, from 84 to 76%. And the department has also maintained the same level of performance for Q3 at 77%. So we're hoping that uh, Q4 will also then have an improved outcome with an overall improved annual um, outcome. Can we move to the next slide, please? So the indicators and targets that have been achieved, uh, Chairperson in Program 1, we had four targets. Uh, the targets then related to our CSIP, uh, and we needed to make sure that for this quarter, implemented 30% of the CSIP. And we also had our financial management improvement plan, which we also then had to uh, ensure that we had 30% implementation. Together with the, uh, our 
be part of the cooperative governance policy toolkit that was developed. We had to make sure that there was consultation on the toolkit um, and that this needed to be completed uh, by December 2022. Uh, if you then go to uh, program number two, uh, we had to make sure that we had developed a guideline to mainstream the gender-based violence framework uh, into the IDPs of municipalities. And we also then had to make sure that the DDM INS system was developed and piloted. Um, so the outcome then of these two for the court was that the draft guideline on the mainstreaming uh, as the Department of Women, and also the draft IMS DDM uh, updates uh, was done with key inputs from um, all stakeholders. If you go to the next slide, on the full on program two, we had to also ensure that there was a number of reports uh, that we had identified through the district metros in terms of the readiness for the establishment and operationalization of our district um, metro hubs. We had one report that was required to have been developed by December. So the readiness report on the establishment of the DDM hum, hubs was uh, specifically produced uh, for the Gauteng province. And then we also had to have a number of small towns identified for redesign and refurbishment as part of the support program for becoming smart cities. So we've developed that job support program. Uh, and this will provide a framework for municipalities to also then utilize uh, towards the process of becoming smart cities. Uh, and this uh, we will also then assist, sorry, this will also assist municipalities in responding to some of the urban challenges. Uh, on the next a uh, target indicator is we had to have a number of dysfunctional municipalities supported through our MSIPs. So the target was then that we had to support 49 dysfunctional municipalities, and we reported back that we supported 58 municipalities uh, for the quarter. On program three for institutional development, the first target was that we had to have a, a number of reports on the implementation of the recommendation of the budget forum on the local government uh, fiscal framework. Uh, and this for this quarter, uh, three reports on the implementation of the recommendation of the budget to the budget forum. So the report uh, with the recommendations was actually then um, tabled uh, to the budget forum. Uh, so, in essence, we had actually then developed the LGF, the local government fiscal framework, and then um, submitted in December. If we can then move to the next slide. So, continue with program three. Uh, there were a number of district uh, stakeholder engagements that needed to be held. Um, so, there were four district stakeholder engagements um, that were conducted on the Responsible Citizenry Campaign. Uh, and we've developed reports for Mopani, uh, district and local municipalities, for Capricorn District, uh, for Sail Apartment, and then also in KwaZulu Natal, uh, there were four districts. On the number of provinces, uh, where we needed to implement um, the GovChat social media platform, uh, so there are three provinces that were implementing. Uh, so the three provinces have indeed um, implemented the social media platform by the 30th of de December. Uh, the next target was that we needed to make sure that six provinces were supported to capacitate um, the municipalities to main, maintain functional ward committees. So we're reporting that six provinces were supported the capacitate municipalities that would actually then uh, maintain their functional board committees uh, were then supported. On the next target, we needed to make sure that there were three impacts. Uh, sorry, that we had functionality assessments uh, done on the uh, impacts. And so three impacts uh, were then assessed uh, and we have then developed uh, the reports. 
The next target is the report on the implementation of actions that we needed to then uh, address on issues that were raised by the NGSA in line with section 134 of the MSMA. Uh, and as such, we needed to then report on the implementation of our actions in line with the section uh, of the MSMA. Uh, so the report on the implementation of these actions um, uh, that were raised by the AG uh, has then uh, been approved. It forms part of our section 48 uh, report uh, as per the requirement of the Municipal Systems Act um, uh, on the states of local government. If we could move to the next slide. Okay, so on program four, which is the National Disaster Management Center, we had three targets for this quarter. The first one was that we needed to ensure that we have three municipalities identified within the sector and supported on the implementation of their disaster funding arrangements. So as such, uh, we had engagement sessions um, and uh, we also then scheduled and held uh, additional sessions with the DFSE in December. Uh, and as such, to, pro to provide the support on the implementation of the disaster funding arrangements. Um, on 4.2, we, we were required then to ensure that we have a number of organs of state supported to prevent, prepare, and mitigate disaster risks uh, as per the applicable disaster management plans. And the target for this quarter was 10 municipalities. So we had two district municipalities, Waka and Garden Drew district municipalities in priority disaster areas were then supported uh, to prepare and mitigate disaster risks. On 4.3, we had to also then make sure that we draft the adjusted national disaster management framework and ensure that that is approved uh, by December. So the draft adjusted disaster management framework was refined and was then also approved by the head of the NDMC uh, in December as planned. On the community work program, the first target is that we needed to have um, a number of CWP participants uh, participating on the program, 250,000 of them. And for this quarter, we had 281,000 just over who participated on the program. If we go to the next slide, Uh, so these are the slides then that give an indication of the targets that we did not meet uh, for the quarter. Uh, the first one was the number of district and metro one plans needed to be reviewed and updated uh, for the 44 districts and eight metro spaces um, as a whole for the year. But for the quarter, we were to look at 30 districts and metro one plans. Uh, so we found that we had some delays in uh, receiving responses from the um, districts. Uh, and in fact, there are a number of municipalities that actually asked for extensions um, up until the 31st of March. So we uh, still have a few um, outstanding. On the integrated uh, monitoring framework for the DDM, um, what the target here was that we would have piloted in the one district, the integrated monitoring framework. Uh, this one we also didn't achieve um, because if you actually look at the what is meant by piloting, and we just thought that this perhaps was not a smart indicator uh, and it's something that we would also need to uh, then review in future. So what we've then looked at uh, is a, we've actually planned, sorry, the piloting uh, to actually kick off then only in, in quarter four. Um, on 2.5, the target was that we needed to have 30 districts and six metro economic recovery plans implemented. So we had 31 districts that responded. Uh, sorry, of the 31 districts, 11 districts indicated that they either did not have economic recovery plans or draft plans. So 
So um, hence there was no uh, full implementation as per the target. So we have ongoing uh, communication and requests with the municipalities uh, for us to then catch up in the, the fourth quarter. On the MIC allocations uh, for this quarter, we needed to make sure that 40% of MIC allocations were then spent uh, on municipal infrastructure. We've had quite a number of challenges uh, within the municipalities, such as the uh, supply chain management delays for performance of their contractors, uh, business forum interference, uh, and delays also then in payments of invoices, which then impact on expenditure. So the uh, DCOG team has been uh, conducting performance engagements with the underperforming municipalities. Uh, and of course, to really confirm the status of their projects. And we are also bringing in MISA to support us uh, and to try to assist the municipalities then um, to spend on their allocations. If we can go to the next slide. Okay, on this, the, this on 3.2, it's the target that was not met by institutional development. We were supposed to have an integrated local government capacity building strategy highlight, piloted in one of the districts. Uh, the strategy itself has in essence been developed. Um, however, we were not ready um, to actually pilot it. So we're moving it across now to the fourth quarter to ensure that this um, is undertaken. And we believe that we will be able to achieve it for the actual uh, financial year. On the community works program, we were required to train 25,000 CWP participants. Uh, sorry, that's for the year. For the quarter, we're supposed to have trained 10,000. Uh, however, uh, not all participants were trained. Uh, and the reason for our deviation um, was that um, was due to the CWP circular, which stipulated that no procurement of goods and services, including training, could have commenced unless the proper procurement procedures were being undertaken, as this was a key uh, finding with the AG. Um, that was something we were going through a process of rectifying with the implementing agent. If we could move to the next slide. So here, Chairperson, we're going to give feedback on our financial performance. And with your permission, I thought I would then hand over to our CFO. Uh, and Chair, I think that this could be our CFO's first portfolio committee meeting. So I would also need to introduce her uh, to the portfolio committee. Uh, her name is Funa Neng Latlatsi. And uh, for now, Ning, if I could hand over to you and you could maybe just uh, introduce yourself to the portfolio committee with your permission, Chair. Thanks. Oh, great. Welcome, Chair. Um, thank you very much, DG. Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much. My name is Funani Matazi. I will take the members through the financial. I, we, we don't hear this thing. We don't, we don't hear her, Chair. We don't hear her. We don't hear her. We don't hear I hear you. Uh, I'll, I'll address Chair, that. Um, the department at this point in time. Uh, we can't hear you, CFO. Is there anything you can do? That's bad. We, we can't hear the CFO, DG. Chairperson? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you Chair, now. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Yes. Proceed. Hey. Hey, you are lost now, uh, CFO. 
DG, any other arrangement? Uh, thank you so much, Chairperson. Um, the CFO is, is supported by um, Mr. Sigaba in the meeting and also by Shaka Moloto. I just need to check that they both are in the meeting and if they are audible. If not, let's check if Mr. Sigaba is in and is audible. <clears throat> yes, I'm in the meeting, uh, DG. I'm not sure whether I'm audible enough or not. You are audible. Okay, are you able to take us through, Mr. Sigaba? Yes, DG, I, I can. Yeah. Thank you. Please, please proceed. Thank you, DG. Uh, good morning, Chair, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, our Deputy Ministers, DG and colleagues. Uh, Chair, this is the snapshot of the financial performance of the department uh, program. We do have, if we look at uh, administration as at the end of quarter uh, three, which is end of December, administration, the expenditure was at 83,7%. The local government and its support intervention management was at 58%. Institutional development at 56,5% and uh, NDMC at 36,7, a community works program at 72, and uh, the earmarked and exclusive uh, funds was at 65,2. The earmarked and exclusive uh, funds, uh, Chair, re represent the mostly the grants, that is your local equitable share, the, the municipal infrastructure grant, the, the IUDG, Integrated Urban Development Grant and also the Municipal Systems Improvement Grant, together with the subsidies that we pay to entities. So, <clears throat> in terms of the figures, then there is a, there, those are the figures at Program One. For instance, the budget was at 307 million. We spending at 257 million, which represents the 83,7. Uh, if I can go to the next slide, uh, Chair. These are the basically the earmarked funds uh, that I was talking to at Salga, they are at 75%. Municipal Democratic Board at 2,2%. South African Cities Network at 66,7%. And the uh, MISA, Municipal Infrastructure Support Agency at 85,5%. This is the, the grants that we are administering, local government equitable share, that is, that represent almost 95% of our budget, Chair. Hence, if you look at the overall expenditure, we were saying we're at 62%. That is more affected by the local government equitable share, which is 87,3 billion. What has been transferred is 59,6 billion, which is represents the 68,3. The municipal infrastructure grant is at 61%. Integrated urban development grant, which is 65,9%. Municipal systems improvement grant at 28,6%. That is a grant that is very low in expenditure. The, and then we've got the, <clears throat> the, 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 the grant DRG, which is at 60,3% and MDRG, which is a, this is the disaster relief grant and the municipal disaster response grant. That is a uh, very low at 2%. We've got 3,3 billion for municipal disaster re re relief grant, but we've only spent 6,3. I think that will um, give members some uh, concern there. If you go to the next uh, slide, I think this is where we detailed now most of the expenditure. Opponents were reflecting the, the cash flow how we have been spending the money, you will see that uh, for the first three months, we are really below 1%. And then starting from July, that's when we make the first transfers to for the local government equitable share. We are at 34.5%. And in December, that is where we also had a lot of transfers for the municipal infrastructure grant. Hence, it's at 5.2%. Uh, if I can, I think we can go to the next page, Chair. This is just a summary of what we have already. 
this is the budget now looking at the original estimate of national expenditure budget of 728 million and then we had violence and rollovers mostly that was for the once of gratuity to the outgoing councillors and also there was an additional uh, those are the only then we also had additional funding for the disaster response grant of 344 million which were was received during the adjustment budget process we also received an additional 3.2 billion share for the disaster municipal disaster recovery grant that is the funds then that have not yet been that in the process of being paid to the municipalities then we had some environments for the eastern seaboard development of, of 50 million that is the additional funding that we gave to misa for the eastern seaboard development so the adjusted budget chair we are talking about 115 billion and so far in terms of quarter three actual expenditure we spent 74.9 billion we have the remaining budget of 40 million 27 of of that we're representing local government equitable share and the mig those are the the major sort of uh, funds and also the municipal disaster relief grant and the community works program so at the present moment we had projected to spend 91.8 percent share at the end of the quarter but the actual percentage was uh, 65.2 you will notice that if you look at the local government equitable share that is where we also had underspending because some municipalities were not uh, performing in terms of the implementation of the municipal internet grant and as such we had to implement the division of revenue act where we had to withhold some of the funds for for, for some of those municipalities i think there, there is a list that provide uh, the names of the municipalities uh, concerned if you go to the next slide chair Basically, this is where this is just the operational budget now, excluding the the grants and the subsidies to. So, if you look at the, we're also classifying now the expenditure in terms of the economic classification, where we're reflecting for instance compensation of employees. We had 353 million. Then there was an additional 12 million for the salary increases, which made a an amount of 366 at the present moment we are at 257 million and we had projected to be at 267 so there is an under expenditure which is mostly due to the reorganization of the organizational structure and the implementation of which impacted on the feeling of vacant position we also on goods and services chair we had 353 million we have spent 235. We had projected to spend 299 million, but we, we at, in terms of percentage, then what it's 66.5 as against 78.4 that was projected. This underspending of uh, goods and services was due to the suspension of the 217 Preferential Procurement Framework Act regulations by NASA that delayed the start and, and delays in the implementation of our annual procurement plan. The underspending on capital assets chair is mostly due to the delayed move to the new office building uh, and the withholding of procuring for new office furniture. However, DB, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure has approved the move now, which is expected to be implemented in, in, the, in August. In the at, the at the at the present moment, we are doing we are dealing with uh, partitioning of the office space, and also installation of the ICT infrastructure. If we go to the next slide, this is more a narrative that talks to the the transfers to entities and also the the grants. I think I've already alluded to the fact that. Uh, if you look at the local government equitable share, share 
we were projected to have transferred 64 billion, but uh, because of the underspending and also withholding of uh, some of the transfers for MIG, we, we only transferred 59.6 billion. The same applies with uh, municipal infrastructure grant. We're supposed to have spent 12.1 billion, but we have only spent 10.2 um, billion. So there is uh, also under expenditure there. These are the narratives then that talk to the under expenditure. Can I go to the next page, uh, Chair? These are the measures then to deal with uh, some of the challenges that we have. We do monitor the expenditure against the budget and provision on a monthly basis, Chair. And when there is underspending on the grants, follow ups are being made with the relevant municipalities and provide it support through the municipal infrastructure grant and also drawing up of catch up plans. Where there's a possibility of overspending internally, measures and controls are quickly put in place and where necessary, apply the shifting environment of funds to that particular item in line with the prescripts. Where expenditure is unforeseen and unavoidable, the department uses the budget adjustment process to request additional funding. The department is, however, experiencing underspending on goods and services. This is due to poor implementation of the procurement plan and its process. The, we are improving on the quality of our terms of reference on bids. As this has been the main reason for the terms of reference to be sometimes severally returned back to for enhancement. All terms of reference should be finalized by the last and first quarter of the financial year to allow swift process of implementation. The implementation of the procurement plan to start at least within two months in the start of the financial year, if the delays are experienced in the process. Program managers to submit names of nominees to serve in the bid committees in advance. This will assist in allocating bids in the procurement plan to the committees to fast track the process. The bid committees to adhere to the planned dates of meeting and do ad hoc sittings when necessary to avoid delays. Next slide. Chair, I think this is the end of the financial uh, performance. Uh, I think the DG then will take over. It is recommended that the committee note the quarter three performance report for the financial year 2022-23. Thank you, Chair and honorable members. Uh, thank you, uh, DG. Do you have anything to say? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Uh, if you, with your permission, I will see if old hand is up. Uh, she might want to just include one or two points with your permission. I hope she will be audible. Allowed. Thank you very much, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you Chair are. Person? Yes, thank you very you. much. Okay, thank Chair. I just want to elaborate much on the the possible underspending of the local government equitable share, which is the 3.4 3 billion that we have indicated as offsetting in our presentation. Chair, I think the, what we are saying is that municipalities have been having problems in as far as the financial management practices, financial management dysfunctionalities in the in 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 their in their space. And Treasury would use this period in the form of taking money from equitable share to offset gains. And the reason behind this is that these ministries will use any arms that are conditional in nature for the purposes of their operations. And this is one kind of weapon that Treasury would normally place on these municipalities. So we are not leaving this money in terms of the Treasury, we are liaising with those municipalities as we indicated that we help them through the MISA. And what is going to happen now, we check those municipalities as to whether the meeting requirements needed by National Treasury. And we will advise by National Treasury for much whether those monies are troubled.
you are cut off. Uh, uh, Chairperson, with your permission, I think I think it's okay, Chair. We can. Uh, uh, I would say that I'm happy with the, what has been said so far. So, with your permission, Chair, we can proceed uh, with the meeting. I don't have further comments for now. Thanks. Thank you. Um, honorable members, we just received uh, uh, information from the minister to say she is uh, uh, traveling between Umtata and Islanda. So, but she is part of the meeting. And, uh, oh, I can see the face. Uh, so she's part of the meeting, but uh, traveling. And uh, Honorable Bapela, as was earlier indicated, she says uh, she, he got an earlier flight. So that commitment to say we'll join late is, is still there. So the minister is part of the meeting, but traveling. So we might not say uh, she must say anything for now. I think let's move to the next presentation. Um, unless Maybe Minister wants to say something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to add something to what the CFO has said about the municipality and spending, especially on the infrastructure grants. Yes. We are trying now to get a permission that when we see that a municipality is not able to spend, we then, as national, do visa and maybe other means assist that municipality. Because bringing the money back to trade to national, the people on the ground still need those services. So we're in the process of that discussion. So I just thought I should add that as something that we're trying to do to try and assist municipalities to be able to spend on their infrastructure plans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Can we then move to MESA now? Presentation of MESA. MESA. Hey, good morning, Chair. Good morning. Uh, apologies. I'm driving. I just landed from Tata. My colleague uh, Garfield uh, with Boy uh, will present on my behalf. Yes, it did indicate that. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Why are you even speaking when we are traveling? You don't uh, respect this committee completely. Can we allow the uh, Mr. Boyzen? Come in. Uh, good morning, honorable, honorable chair, honorable members. Uh, chair, can I just get uh, um, clarity if I'm audible? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, chair, I'll just take the committee through our quarterly performance and financial statements for the third quarter. Can I just request that we go on to the next slide, please? Uh, yes, that's just the presentation outline. Uh, we will just I'll go straight into our third item, which is the performance against our APP targets, as well as our financial performance for the fourth quarter chair. Can I go to the next slide? Uh, I think it's slide six. We can continue at the next one. Okay, thank you. Uh, chair, so for the third, third, third quarter, we had the 23 targets that we had to report on. Out of that 23, we achieved 22. Uh, there was only one target that was not achieved uh, that is for, that fall under our program technical support services. So we had an achievement rate of 96% for the quarter uh, under review chair. Uh, next slide, please. So just under program one chair, those were some of the, the targets that was achieved, which is our standard uh, indicators for the four quarters. Next slide, please. So in terms of program two, which is our first of our two core programs. So in terms of the technical support services, we are continuing with our labor intensive construction methods, which is the 25 municipalities. 
We have trained around 402 municipal officials uh, in terms of municipal infrastructure management. Uh, and then we also enrolled uh, around 86 officials uh, in missiles recognition of prior learning programs uh, for members. But you can continue. Next slide, please. Then in terms of program three, uh, IDMS, uh, we are still moving on management system, IDMS, which is in the 10 municipalities. Uh, we're also supporting uh, municipalities in terms of their uh, procurement practices. We supported four municipalities uh, with the target there. Yeah. Um, then we also have uh, in terms of support to 10 municipalities in terms of sector partnerships. Next slide, please. Okay, so we continue also in terms of supporting municipalities in terms of the implementation of the long term infrastructure investment plans. Uh, we're also continuing with the coordination and planning of the Eastern Seaboard Development Chair. And uh, I think, as you are aware, Chair, the Minister, as well as members of MISA, have uh, traveled back because yesterday there was the skills development workshop that was held uh, in the Eastern Cape of Tata for that as well. Uh, and then we also are supporting the municipality in terms of preparing and packaging bankable projects, uh, Chair. This is in terms of accessing funding from, uh, specifically from the private sector. Uh, Next slide, please. This is then the only target that was not achieved. As I earlier alluded to, uh, it's in the program two, it's on technical support services. Uh, this, this indicator dealt with in terms of its partnerships where we are establishing with professional bodies. And this is just to, to, to get best practices on infrastructure management. So uh, in terms of uh, the achieve or what, what was not achieved, engagements were held uh, members uh, with the uh, Engineering Council of South Africa as such. Partnerships, but unfortunately, the MOUs was only signed off. So the MOU was not signed up from uh, the engineering council as well as from BERT. Members, is that within the first two months of the fourth quarter, we have now received those signed MOUs from the engineering council as well as from BERT. So uh, for the fourth quarter, this time. Something that has happened to your system. We can't hear you well now. It looks well, like. Just... Oh. Okay, can you hear me now, Chair? Yes. Oh, Try. Apologies. apologies for that, Chair. Um, um, what I'm saying, Chair, on this one, I'm not sure if I have to repeat myself, but this one is the one that was not achieved. The only indicator for the third quarter uh, it dealt with the partnerships. So, uh, in this regard, yeah, yeah. There's something wrong with your system. I don't know whether there's you, you, there's an echo that comes out of it. Now it makes it difficult for us to hear. Is that better, Chair? It's is better. It echo? Is, is it not echoing, Chair? Yes. Um, let me just... Um, let me just see if I can move around, Chair. Yes, you can. In the meantime, proceed. Uh, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, is it much better now, Chair? Yes, you are better. Okay. Sorry. Apologies, uh, Chair. Um, Chair, on this one, as I've mentioned, this is the only target we haven't achieved. Uh, the reason being is that uh, for this target to be achieved, we needed to get the MOU uh, from both ourselves as well as from our partners. We have only received that signed MOUs during this quarter, but this target will definitely be achieved come fourth quarter as well as for the annual target as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the next slide. So the next couple of slides, Jay, is in terms of our financial performance. Uh, as you can see, we have received our income was about uh, 350 million up to the, uh, the three, for the three quarters. We did receive the three tranches from TICO as well as the additional 50 million for the Eastern Seaboard project. I think that was also alluded to uh, with TICO's presentation. And then there was around 10 million in terms of interest received. So, of the 350 million, you can see our expenditure chair, I could call other members, was around 388 million, which gives us a deficit of minus 37 million. And uh, the expenditures was on our employee cost, 
we have now, I think we are, our uh, vacation rate is around 7% in terms of a vacancy rate. So there's a sufficient yeah. contracted service in, the, in terms of our general services. Please. Thank you. In terms of our financial position, Chair, at 31 December, so even though we have uh, overspent during the third quarter, we still have uh, cash in our bank of 261 million uh, that contributes towards our current. Of 263 million. So, in terms of our non current assets, is property and intangibles. This is our MITMAS, it's about 20 million. Then, in terms of our current liabilities, it's uh, in terms of our operating lease, in terms of payables, of 57 million. So, our net assets at, at the end of the 31st December uh, stood at 226 million uh, for members. Next slide, please. So, in terms of our cash flow statement, check. Uh, we had an opening balance of the 1st of April of 331 million. We received uh, additional 350 million in terms of the tranches from the vehicle. We had a payment of about 418 million, uh, exit with about 2 million, and that gives us the, the closing balance of 261 million that we have then in our bank. Next slide, please. That's our awareness report. Uh, this is just to show that what was the total budget compared to the third quarter and what was actually spent. So you can see in most cases, um, the actual is, a, is less than the total budget that was allocated to for the specific period. Uh, so we did the administration cost for 9 million versus 47 million spent. You can see that the reason for the value for the really uh, services, there was the same in terms of training. And in terms of contracted services, this is around 84 million versus about 82. There were underspending of about 2.3 uh, million, uh, but this has now been revised. Um, this is uh, consideration as an effect of the surplus that was approved by the National Treasury. Employee costs are 157 versus 145, and then the depreciation. Uh, so, in terms of the total budget, we is, for the third quarter was 295, but we spent 270. Next slide, please. All right. So, the next three slides, Jay, is in terms of the specific programs that we are currently undertaking. The first one is with regards to the labor intensive construction. There, as also, as you looked earlier by DECO, the amount that we received was the 50 million. So the funds that was not committed at the end of December was around 3.8 million. So we have committed funds of 46 million. So of that 46 million, already 41 million was spent uh, by uh, the end of December. So the unspent commitments was only around 5 million. So you can see that uh, in terms of the, the whole 50 million, 92% is committed. So it's only then the 3.8 million that we need to, to, to spend uh, in the remaining of the, the quarter. Next slide, please. Here we go to the next slide, please. In terms of the innovative technology for solid waste management, uh, under members, we received an innovative fund from National Treasury that was 284 million. So the only funds of that 284 that has not yet been allocated committed is an amount of 537,000 rand. So in terms of the committed funds, we have spent or we have already uh, paid out an amount of 197 million, uh, which means we are left with about 86 million uh, that is unspent, but that is being committed. Uh, and then in terms of the committed funds, you will see of that 284 million, number members, 99.8% is committed. It's only the 0 0.2, it's about 537,000 that we have to commit to. Uh, next slide, please. That was the last one, too, which is the Eastern Seaboard project. Um, we have that 50 million that was allocated. So, in terms of that, the uh, funds that is not committed is around 32 million. So, the committed funds is 20. Of that committed funds, we have spent only about 1.8. 
believe this is the one that we also received uh, during the third quarter this uh, month, Chair, but we are committed to spending uh, much more than we it's currently in the because at the moment we only spend about 8%, but there is projects that have been, uh, in terms of, that have been approved. So those projects are actually starting off uh, during this uh, month as well, Chair, so the spending will improve uh, during this month. But at the current moment, we are sitting with 40% of the committed funds for end of March, of which 60% is currently committed. Next slide, please. In terms of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, uh, there's the totals that you see there, a, a total of 527,000. Those are uh, that this, uh, came from the 2034 to the 2024 financial year. So, the interest by the service provider. So, for the current financial year, uh, we did not experience or we did not incur any fruitless and wasteful expenditure uh, for members. Next slide, please. Then in terms of irregular expenditure, we also have not in, incurred any irregular expenditure for the current financial year as well. Uh, honorable members, next slide, please. Then in terms of payable share, as of 31 December, you will see that do you pay all our service providers uh, within the 30 days as required? So an amount of 57 million was paid, so none of them are paid. Uh, of the 30 days uh, as required. Next slide, please. Actually, my final slide is just to say that it's recommended that the performance note the quarterly performance report and financial statements of municipal support agent for the first quarter of 2022-23. Thank you very much, Jane. Apologies for, for, for that uh, disruption in terms of presenting. Uh, thank you very Un much. Unfortunately, Chair, we didn't hear anything. Uh, I've been trying to manage the, the 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 sound and whatever. Uh, I I understand your concern, but we have noted it. Um, I think we we are experiencing problems uh, of. Uh, network and everything else. Uh, Honorable Simon has just said uh, he is uh, having a load shedding where he is start, starting at 10. But but no, I, I acknowledge uh, what you are saying, uh, Honorable Khalib, that it looks like we, uh, uh, we are having network problems. Uh, but let's let's take the last presentation. Uh, DTA. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, honourable chairperson, uh, honourable members of the committee, uh, the honourable minister, and my colleagues. I hope I'm audible, chairperson. Ah, you are better than everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, just also to save on bandwidth stability, I would request that uh, uh, I, I don't switch on my, my camera. Um, the, the presentation as we have it um, on the screen is for the third quarter uh, performance information and financial report uh, for the Department of Traditional Affairs 2022 and 2023 financial year. If we go to the next slide, we um, just show on that uh, uh, next slide what the presentation outline involves. Uh, and in the interest of time, I will not delve much on this. Uh, we'll then go straight to the next slide, which is just uh, then indicating the targets that we uh, uh, had a total of 12 targets for the third quarter, the quarter under review. And out of those targets, we achieved 10 of them and the two of the targets were, were not achieved. And we just saw in the pie chart as well in terms of the 83% achieved, 17% not achieved split. We'll then go into the details of the uh, performance in relation to those uh, targets. So when we go to this slide here, it shows that um, the first target there relates to 
what we call organizational performance information compliance management plan, uh, what we, we do annually as part of our annual performance plan is to develop a composite plan for all the organizational performance information requirements, uh, such as submission of quarterly reports uh, on time to the Department of uh, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. All of them are included in that plan and our target was that we should achieve at least 85% uh, of those targets. And we are saying here uh, that uh, we, we actually achieved uh, all, all of those targets. And similarly, which is on the next slide, uh, it's the one on financial management, call it uh, 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 compliance management plan, CFM compliance management plan, which is on finance related matters. So again, all the issues that relate to financial uh, management compliance, submission of the necessary reports to treasury, the payments of suppliers within 30 days, we all include them in this plan. And our target was that we should achieve at least 85% of the targets we had and we, we achieved all of all of those targets. The next one, uh, that's where we come to the first target that uh, we, we did not achieve, which is that of procurement uh, from women, youth and persons with uh, disabilities, um, uh, where they procure through, through the department. There is a split in terms of the targets which uh, we obtained from the department of um, the women, uh, youth and persons with disabilities that we should strive to have 40% uh, procurement target for women, uh, companies owned by women, 30% owned by youth, and 7% uh, owned by persons with disabilities. So we say we did not achieve it. If we look at that column there, we indicate that uh, for women, instead of 40%, uh, we achieved 44.4%, which is higher than the target. Um, for, for persons with disabilities, we achieved 7.4%. Which is higher than the seven percent, but the challenge was for youth uh, companies owned by youth that we could only achieve fourteen point eight percent. So we said overall it means that the uh, the target uh, uh, was not achieved. And what we have experienced here, uh, honourable chairperson, is uh, is that because the supply chain management and preferential procurement regime uh, does not, for example, specify youth uh, as a preferential category that should be taken into consideration. Uh, when you achieve it, it's more by chance uh, than by design, uh, because you can't, at the level of procurement, discriminate uh, on the basis of, well, this goes to a, a company owned by youth, and, uh, and, 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 and therefore they will, get, they will get priority. But it's a very key transformation target that we keep monitoring um, uh, so that we are able to report on the progress that is being made. On the next slide, um, we then deal with the a target that relates to uh, Section 24 of the Traditional and Quaison Leadership Act. As honorable members might recall, that Section 24 uh, uh, provides for uh, traditional councils, kings councils, uh, principal traditional leadership councils uh, to uh, uh, get involved in partnerships, that they can form partnerships with other government departments, different spheres of government, they can form partnerships with municipalities, they can form partnerships with other um, organizations, aid organizations, non-governmental organizations, um, uh, private companies for purposes of socioeconomic development in the India communities. And given the, the importance of that, uh, that provision, uh, last year we developed a guideline on section 24 of the TKLA on how to uh, and what the requirements are for, for these kinds of partnerships. Uh, so uh, our target this year has been on ensuring that we then use that guideline to workshop uh, all provinces uh, on the on the implementation of that guideline. We targeted two provinces uh, for this third quarter, that's was Eastern Cape and Limpopo, and that was uh, achieved. Uh, on the next slide, we uh, focused on uh, uh, promoting the involvement of local houses of traditional and coalition leaders in, in DDM activities. Uh, we're taking uh, all the um, uh, uh, districts where there is traditional leadership, uh, which means there will be local houses there uh, as well. Uh, so that's what we're targeting, 32. Uh, for the third quarter, we targeted 10 uh, of those. And basically working with our colleagues in, in DCOC, uh, we um, uh, collect information on uh, uh, instances of meetings where, for example, the one plans will be reviewed, uh, and then we liaise with the provincial houses and with the local houses uh, to make sure that they are aware uh, of this uh, 
uh, these this meetings uh, and that they are then able to encourage to participate uh, and that we then attend uh, those meetings with, the, with them as well. This obviously guided by the guideline that we previously did on the participation of local houses uh, in DDM uh, activities. So that target was achieved. The next one was on a, a, a building capacity for the local houses to perform their legislated functions as provided for in the, in the TKLA. Uh, we uh, targeted uh, uh, eight provinces for, for the year, provinces, and uh, uh, with the third quarter focus being on two, two provinces, and uh, those provinces were Limpopo and Eastern Cape. Uh, and uh, what we did there is really on the issue of the functionality uh, of those local houses, because previously, based on the functionality assessment checklist that we developed for local houses, which was applied uh, in all the local houses, we, we've then been working with, with provinces to say there must be intervention plans to assist in addressing the findings uh, of those uh, functionality assessment uh, reports uh, of the different, different houses. So the focus here was working with uh, Limpopo and, and the Eastern Cape to coordinate the development of the necessary intervention plans to that effect. On the next slide, I will chair, uh, still with reference to local houses, uh, and this one deals particularly with section 50 of the act, section 50 of the act of the TKLA deals with the uh, establishment of local houses, it deals with their functions, um, and uh, so uh, what 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 we, we we targeted to do during the course of this financial year is to make sure that we work with all the uh, provinces around the implementation of this particular sections uh, of the act, and we targeted two provinces here, uh, and that was achieved during the third quarter as well. The next slide uh, deals with the uh, capacitation of traditional leadership structures on uh, the customary initiation act and the uh, GBVF, BVF, gender-based violence and femicide. We targeted 32 uh, traditional leadership structures for this year and working with provinces, we, we had had 10 as a target for, for the third quarter, but we were able to, to have 16 uh, uh, achieved. That's because then we ended up having 10. Um, all of them were traditional councils, I must emphasize, all of them were traditional councils. So we targeted uh, uh, traditional councils in the Free State and in Limpopo, uh, which were workshopped uh, on uh, the Customary Initiation Act uh, and, and taken through uh, workshopping on gender-based violence and femicide as well. The next slide deals with the social cohesion, where we had said that we work with our uh, counterparts in provinces to make sure that there are dialogues on tribalism and, and, and xenophobia. Um, and we uh, targeted that we will have two such uh, uh, partnerships on these dialogues this way it convened uh, uh, during this course of the third, the, 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 the third quarter as indicated in the report. And the next one, we said that it's important for the institutional traditional leadership to participate in the national days uh, program of, of, of government. So for this quarter, the focus was on the 16 days um, of, um, of, of, of activism against the gender-based violence uh, and, and femicide. Um, and, and indeed, we were then able to work with the institution of traditional leadership, participate in activities in Bumalanga, working with them uh, on, on uh, uh, the 16 days of activism uh, campaign. And then on the next slide, uh, which shows one of the targets that the second target that was not achieved, there is a social cohesion program that was developed uh, uh, in partnership with the uh, uh, counterparts in the departments of. Of, of sports, arts, and culture, and our provincial counterparts. And the target has been to monitor uh, the implementation of, of, of that program across provinces. We had a target of two provinces during this uh, particular uh, uh, quarter. Uh, unfortunately, we could only uh, be able to work with the, with the free state in that regard. Uh, but what, and, and that was as a result of the uh, uh, challenges in the alignment of our schedules between ourselves, our partners. Uh, and the provinces. Uh, but what we have done is to make sure that the, all the remaining provinces will be covered by the end of the current financial year. So all uh, the, the, the outstanding provinces, um, uh, uh, we have engaged with them to ensure alignment so that come the end of the financial year, we have been able to reach all the provinces uh, in terms of this exercise. The next one um, looks at the um, 
provincial houses now are a level up, not just the local houses, this time provincial houses. In this case as well, we develop a functionality assessment instrument for the provincial houses of traditional and quasi leadership. And, uh, and, and, and the issue then was to make sure that we monitor uh, during this particular quarter four provinces on their, on their functionality. Uh, and indeed, we're able to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to achieve that as indicated in the, in the report. Uh, this then takes us to the uh, expenditure report, appropriation statement, the program and economic classification as uh, divided into two. Uh, the first part just shows this information in terms of the different programs. Uh, and we indicate that the adjusted appropriation uh, was 118,143,000. This was just a slight increase from the 177 million that was initially uh, appropriated, and we'll explain that in the in the next slide. Um, and then we just indicate that in terms of uh, expenditure um, uh, uh, up to the, the end of the, the third quarter uh, per program, administration 70.4%, uh, research policy and legislation 58.8%, institutional support and coordination 71.1%, with an average of 68.8%. And the, the bottom part there then just shows that information uh, this time organized according to economic classification um, that in terms of uh, compensation of employees, 70.6%, goods and services, 58.5%. Uh, transfer payments, which will include our transfer to the Sierra Rise Commission, uh, 75% uh, for at the end of the third quarter with the remaining 25% that will be paid uh, by, uh, as we get into the fourth quarter. Uh, and then, of course, payment of capital assets uh, uh, at 53.3%. Uh, the next slide, just uh, some explanatory notes in terms of that, that expenditure report. As I indicated, that the original budget was 177.301 million. It was increased uh, to 180 million uh, as part of the adjustment at, uh, uh, in the category of compensation of employees, which in the main relates to the cost of living adjustment for a, a non pensionable cash allowances for, for public servants. Um, and then I also indicated the issue of the transfer to the Sierra Rights Commission that, that was done as well in compliance with section 38 of the, of the PFMA. Um, and, and that the others then as in terms of the, the linear uh, projections that, that we that we normally work on the national treasure. Uh, that's the presentation, uh, honorable chairperson, uh, the members of the committee, and we recommend that the, uh, uh, the committee and notes the report uh, in terms of performance on predetermined objectives, as well as the expenditure report for the period uh, ending uh, 31st December 2022. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, honorable members, uh, as, as uh, indicated earlier, that you might have had problems in hearing some of the presentation, but we did have the documents. Uh, it's our time now to uh, engage with the, uh, this uh, quarterly performance, this third quarter performance targets. So I'll be taking hands. Uh, uh, I can see the new member, uh, uh, Honorable Oberman, you are number one, Honorable Hrunewald, number two, Honorable Mbumza, number three. Can I take you in that order, Honorable Oberman? Good morning, Chairperson. Is it okay if I keep my video off? No, it's fine. You Thank can. you, Chair. I'd like to know about um, Kariaberg, local municipality. I'm from the Northern Cape, so I saw Kariaberg up there. It said that the, their share of the equitable share allocation have been withheld since July 2022 up to date. I would just like to know what are the details around that because Equitable share is what our people are living off. And then also about the equitable share, 
um, why were 3.4 billion unspent at the end of the financial year whilst municipalities are struggling in that area especially? Then I want to know the department underspend due to compensation of employees um, with all their vacant posts not being filled. Does the vacancies not impact negatively on the performance of the department? And when will all that vacant post be filled? Then regarding the MIC underspending, the reason there was that funds were withheld due to poor performance on municipal projects. What is the department doing to help um, those municipalities? And I see that only 40% of that budget was spent through the year. I'd also like to know what is the status of the provincial tours of the Commission for Khoisan Metas that's to DTA? And is the process of recognition for Khoisan leaders started in each province? And how far is that? And on the initiations, I'd like to know, does municipalities at a local level have the mandate to assist and help with the annual initiation programs? I just want clarity on that because most municipalities saying it's not their baby. And then I want to know how many municipalities still does not have the guidelines for mainstreaming GBVF in the local IDPs. And the representation mentioned that 49 municipalities are dysfunctional. I want to know what plans are in place to ensure service delivery in those 49 dysfunctional municipalities because there is the MISIP the municipal support and intervention plan, and also 58 municipalities have been supported through the plan. I want to know, are they now viable and efficient? And if not, why not after these interventions? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, my apologies, uh, Honorable Hrunewald and Honorable Mbumza. Uh, Honorable Mkalipi is uh, uh, asking that he should be allowed she should be allowed to come before you because she is uh, uh, rushing to another meeting honorable Kalip, can i allow you thank you very much yeah. for making the exception i nearly wanted to engage with the department on few issues and um covered to keep it covered with uh, one of the issues of um, the transfers is raised by the honorable member who just spoke now. But the issue that I want to first raise with the DDG, DDG, please confirm our strategic workshop as we did confirm in this platform last time we engaged with you, because the issues that you are also presenting here, it needs a thorough understanding of this committee in order for us to move together with you in order to have resolved those issues that you are still raising here. Chairperson, um, number one, under programming two, uh, the support that the DG, the, DG, the DG is saying that out of 64 dysfunctional municipality, uh, it's only those municipalities that were able to be uh, 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 supported by the department. But when you go to the ground, it's not the true reflection of uh, getting a support from the department. Maybe you can, if she can unpack, what does it mean? What does that mean that if there is a support that is needed, uh, in terms of the municipality that is failing, what is the really details uh, on the on the on the support that is provided by the department? Because I have an experience here. For instance, I'm from Etekuni municipality, and if Etekuni municipality does not just fail to give me my bill, the water bill, I go to the department to say, guys, can you intervene here? I don't get access to these municipal officials because I'm crying for my water bill. I just want to pay, but no one is uh, able to, to say to me, we have a problem and the bill uh, and so forth and so forth. And then when I activated the department, even that guy who is, is, seems to be working with the department is so helpless. We ended up crying together with a particular guy who has been activated by the department. Please, DG, tell us what do you mean have you provided support in terms of dysfunctional municipalities? Because our 
interest here, Chairperson, is not to receive a report of numbers. Out of 64, we have provided um, support uh, uh, to 54 municipalities. That's enough. We need tangible things to say, yes, indeed, the department is there in terms of providing that functions or that support of the municipality. That is one thing. The second thing, the issues that were raised by the AG. So here, the DG, when we engage with her report, is saying that you no, know, the report was also approved. And then it does, she does not come with a time frame. What will happen for how long those issues will be tackled from the AG? And then when are we likely to get a response? Because when you come here to this committee to say under program three, the AG issues that we raise, uh, the report is approved. It's approved. And then what? Because we are here interested to know if you as the department, have you been able to resolve the issues that the ages raise with you? Then you must tell us when and how. I, I have some problems with understanding under program four of national disaster management, knowing very well that um, uh, if you are telling us that no, we have, um, you have set your target, three targets, out of three targets we have actually, how does, uh, what informs you to set those three targets while we have this, a, 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 a disaster that is coming left and right. As we speak now, there is a very interesting disaster that we have also have to come to, to, to terms with, a disaster of electricity. So knowing very well that the department can say that, no, I, I, I didn't set the target high, only three, which is not in Cape and some, some, some sort of uh, other targets. But we have been able to experience some disasters recently because this thing is un unpredicted. So if you can uh, make me to understand DG in terms of the national disaster, we are the people on the ground. We are the one who know what is happening. Uh, just uh, informal settlement somewhere in Ketomena, a fire just been started and then hundreds of informal settlement uh, is, is, is caught to fire. And then you are telling us that uh, this national disaster has only target three. So how does it work? Because we want some tangible things that also have to be meaningful to our people. I don't want to talk about the CP, CWP uh, chairpersons because today we're hearing about this number, tomorrow is another number. The whole model of CWP, we are still waiting as a committee. And if you remember very well, Chair, is part of the issues that the department must come back to us uh, uh, to, 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 to clarify some of the issues. So I, want, I don't want even to, to waste my time to, inter to, inter to, to engage on the program five. On the finances, as I said earlier on, at least I'm covered by my colleague from DA, but I just want to, to understand from Babu Sikaba, who was doing the presentation here, the issue of the failure of uh, municipalities to utilize the MIG grants. What is the real issue? Is the, the issue is that the municipalities does not know how to do, how to assess to do the paperwork, or there's no appetite at the provincial quarter to assess municipalities. Again, Chairperson, if the, the municipality fail to assess these grants, which is there waiting for them, uh, in order to at least to, 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 to able the informal settlement and all communities to assess this grant, for the betterment of lives of the people, it also comes back to affect the poor people. So I really want to understand, Luguti, so much money has to go back. What is the really issue? Because I got a sense that it's not because the municipalities uh, does not want to assess this grant. It's either there's no capacity in the municipality and also the provincial government, which is co in the in the provincial government, does not have an appetite to assist the municipality because once the provincial court is saying that, let me assist you from this rural municipality in order for you to assess this grant, it means court at a provincial level, it must have a monitoring system until those uh, grants are be able to be accessed until uh, at the end. And then again, if that is the, the fact, so what is the, uh, the department doing? Because we can't afford, we can't allow the situation while we are experiencing on daily basis the lack of water, the lack of infrastructure, and all other service delivery are not taking place at the municipalities. But we are here, we are told to know, in fact, a lot of money was not accessed in order for the municipalities 
to get these uh, grants. So I didn't hear anything on MISA because the person who was uh, making presentation, he had a problem with his gadget. And also, as I was saying that I had a problem with my gadget, I couldn't hear uh, what the DDG uh, of traditional affairs was saying. But the last point is that DG, I still waiting for you after I have intervened and in Otequini MM on his salary. I phoned you several times. You are not coming back to me. As a result, that MM is contemplating to take the department and the municipality to court. Again, why must we lose so much money? Because when you go and defend yourself, you must pay out of the uh, cocktail money and the municipality must pay out of taxpayers' money. Instead of you as a DG to provide feedback on this matter and see how this matter is resolved. Why are we ignored when we are also saying to you, these are the matters that you need also to take up. Thank you very much, Chair. I will, I will listen while I'm entering to my meeting. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, colleagues. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Grunewald. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I was mostly covered by my colleagues, but um, let me put this on. Um, in terms of the underspending of MIG grants and the fact that we are withholding the equitable share from, from municipalities, I must agree, I don't think that's a solution to um, help the municipalities, although I understand why Treasury is doing it. It means that one of the municipalities of which is being withheld, there's a serious problem in terms of legislative kind of say, responsibilities to execute them. Um, therefore, we must actually go to a section 139 to help those municipalities. And unfortunately, um, we are still waiting for the intervention bill from the department. If the department then can allude us to where that, where is that bill and, and when can we expect that? Um, as long as, of course, as far as I could remember, it should have been already before us as a committee um, and we haven't seen anything as far. Then in terms of the report of the implementation and of the actions, to address issues raised by the AG. I want to find out if the department is willing to give us that report. Um, I couldn't find it at state of local government reports or when will it be available for us? And then Chair, I must agree with, with my colleagues to say that, just to say that this has been approved is not relevant for us to do an oversight with. I want to see in terms of what the issues raised by the AG and how it's being addressed. And we can't see that in terms of this presentation and therefore we cannot actually do our oversight. So Chair, let me pause there. I think I was covered um, the rest of the um, kind of issues. Thank you so much. Honorable uh, Mbomza. Good morning, Chair and uh, colleagues. Am I audible, Chairperson? Yes, you are. Yeah, allow me, Chairperson, to not to open up my camera. Chair, uh, starting first with uh, the Department of Traditional Affairs. Uh, I, I note the presentation by DG Tipofa <clears throat> in relation to the uh, achievement of the targets with only one missing. <clears throat> but Chair, I was uh, in a uh, in relation to the TKLA, I was uh, in Zowari in Kanaland municipality. And uh, the Khoisan leadership there, they are at local heads with the municipality. Currently now in the media, you have a situation where the, the, the traditional leadership is accused of occupying uh, municipal offices and uh, being threatened to be removed by the mayor. Now, the, 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 the leadership there raised that they are not participating in the council. And uh, also, which means that uh, their own traditional councils are not up to scratch as yet. So what is the department doing around that uh, in terms of making sure that uh, these leaders have been recognized and they are being now allowed to participate uh, as part of the implementation of the TKLA in the municipalities and in their traditional councils. Secondly, Chair, as part of rolling out this uh, uh, initiation act, 
and uh, implementing it fully. But we still see uh, experience, uh, nasty situations, as well as the high number of deaths in the Eastern Cape, particularly in the last season. And uh, what is the department doing in making sure that uh, uh, the NIOC as well as uh, the PICCs are actually realigning the, the act with uh, the provincial act so that things they run smoothly. That actually the recommendation that was made by the committee uh, is actually implemented so that we save a number of lives uh, during uh, this coming season. Chair, the, 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 uh, the department is, uh, the DG when she was presenting, she's indicating that uh, of the 49, if I captured first in that slide, of the 49 dysfunctional municipalities, uh, they have achieved, they have supported of the 49, they have supported 58. And uh, critically, can we be given a concrete report that indeed those municipalities that have been supported have actually been rescued and they have recovered from their state of dysfunctionality that now we could indeed say that they are indeed moving towards a viable state of a municipality. Uh, because this to indicate that we have supported this number without any concrete evidence that indicates that indeed that support has yielded this particular result that these municipalities are functional. Uh, that, that has to be substantiated here. It is highly worrying, Chair, that uh, you have uh, only 40% of the MIG at this particular time that has been actually spent by municipalities. And the department is indicating to us and citing a number of challenges within the municipalities around supply chain bra and financial that are actually contributing to this matter. What is the department actually having identified these particular challenges? that are making the municipalities uh, to understand a critical funding for service delivery to communities. What is it that the department therefore is doing to address those particular challenges around municipalities? Because if you look here, you find that in the LGC SIMS, that is local government uh, uh, support management, uh, the department had only achieved five out of nine targets. And uh, then this means that uh, if at that particular area, uh, we have not achieved that much, what kind of support are we that were mandated by the constitution? Are we really practically providing uh, to municipalities so that indeed they could discharge their functions optimally and as expected? What is the progress regarding to the implementation of the 2021-2022 post-audit action plan in relation to the community-based community works program? Again, in the, at the time of uh, the last quarterly briefing with the department, the department had achieved the target relating to the appointment of the, the department had not achieved, I mean, the target relating to the appointment of the hub managers and administrative staff in the 21 water services authorities district. And what is the current update in this regard? In the same vein, Chair, in the same briefing, the department had not achieved the target related to the tabling of the intergovernmental support monitoring and intervention bill in parliament. And uh, we have been raising this matter uh, several times because we were assuming that uh, this particular uh, 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 appeal 
will go a long way to address this problem that uh, when we actually, the department invokes a section 139, uh, we are saying that it is not yielding the actual result. Then uh, what is the current position with regard to this uh, bill, Chair? Again, Chair, we are aware that the department had actually intervened through section 139, subsection seven in two municipalities in South Africa. One, that is Mangaung, as well as uh, Enokum Kijima, which is troubled now. Um, we, we have not received any reports as to how far is the department actually to aid. We have no report around that intervention in terms of these APPs as to what is the progress in the intervention in the two municipalities, whether our intervention is national, is that effective other than that of the provinces? Chair, we, we also want to know how many municipalities has the department successfully advised to include in their service delivery and budget implementation plan targets to reduce non-revenue water and electricity losses. What has been done regarding those municipalities that have not uh, done so? In the presentation of the financial performance, we are told that 63.3% uh, of the disaster relief grant has not been actually spent and uh, disaster is troubling this country at the current moment. And there is even a threat of this Freddy thing from, uh, from Malaysia, which is uh, beginning now to be uh, threatening Limpombo and everything. And, and then we are saying we have not spent the disaster. We had a serious floods in the country in, in KZ10, in Eastern Cape, and uh, where else, in Northwest. Now we are told that uh, the disaster relief grant has not been actually utilized. What, 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 what is exactly happening? Yet you are saying that uh, the disaster, the National Disaster Management Center had achieved 100% of the targets. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Um, I, I think we must now uh, uh, allow the responses. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure now, uh, but I, I'm certain the DGs are here. So if the uh, minister or DM is around, uh, let me get that indication. But for now, I'll be calling on the DGs to lead and uh, assign whoever else must uh, help to respond. Did you? Yes, I'm still around, Chair, but I agree oh. with your question. Thank you. OK. No, uh, thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, the way we will do it, uh, I will assign each of the DDGs to respond to the questions that relate to their programs. And then when they have done with their responses, I will uh, fill in. Um, as in we, uh, there are still gaps. So I thought I would start out firstly with, uh, with program one. Uh, so any questions that related to cost of employment, et cetera, can be done uh, by our DG for corporate services. And then we will move and then to the CFO on any questions that relate to transfers and financial elements are supported by Mr. Sigava. Thanks, Chair. We'll start there. Yeah. Okay, can we start with the, the CFO and team, please? On the issues that relate to transfer, equitable share, etc. Thank you very much, DG. Thank you, Chair. My apologies earlier, I didn't got cut. Um, I am going to respond on the issue of the MIC and Chairperson, through your permission, 
uh, the technical people as they would come in, they would elaborate much on the issue of the support and the uh, working with provinces, how it helps the municipalities to regain the strength as the member has indicated. Um, I need to indicate here, Chair, that while we are also monitoring the MIG as a department, National Treasury does their own performance assessment on all the grants that are being given to municipalities. It may not be only the grants that are received from the Department of, of Cooperative Governance, but it's all the grants that are relative to all the, or contributing to the measurement of the projects. So now when they see that the other grants are not performing according to the requirements of the conditional grants, then Treasury would uh, withhold the MIG simply because of the non-performance of the or, or, or the assessment that they would do relative to, to the other grants. And as I indicated, with the assistance of NISA, um, um, that is often given to municipalities. There is a rescue that is noticeable simply because uh, in the past three years that of the assessment that we've done, we have transferred all the funds from our side. We have not withheld anything. And for these ones as well, we are working with National Treasure to ensure that those funds that are withheld are transferred. <coughs> excuse me to the municipalities that they deserve. However, it doesn't end there because that money has to be monitored to be spent on the ground. And this is where I would be asking our technical <coughs> teachers to assist on that note. In as far as Karei Beck is concerned, Chairperson, since July, uh, we've been monitoring the performance of the municipality at its entirely. And to date, they have not improved on the issues of not complying with the conditions of the Division of Revenue Act on all the other grants that they are receiving. And this is where National Treasury is withholding the entire allocation of the equitable share of, of Caribbean until such time that Treasury sees it fit that this municipality is ready to can comply or is complying with the conditions of Division of Revenue Act and without actually contravening with any other conditions that are in the Act itself, then that money would be released. And I think this is where we are engaging with, the, we will be engaging with the province and I think the, our program DDG is engaging with the province just so that this money gets released and, and we don't struggle to get a rollover at the end of the day. Then on the issue of the disaster, and, and this is where I got cut, Chair, my apologies on that one. I do want to, I want to indicate that, yes, this money, the 3.2 billion that we have received during adjustment budget is the one that makes it uh, as if the disaster management center has not spent its entire budget. You will recall, Chairperson, that the total amount that we've received from the beginning of the financial year in as far as the, discussed, the disaster recovery has been spent. So the 26 million that we had received from Treasury at the beginning was spent at its entirely. However, when we look at the 3.2 billion that we have received during adjustment budget, is the money that has been prepared to be spent for, to be transferred to the municipalities because plans are being received by NDMC and a number of municipalities will be receiving these transfers during the period of March. We will be transferring it to Echegwini Metro, Umklatuzi, King Kachuayo, Inkosi Linga Libalele, Alfred Duma, Umkungundlovu, Ilembe, and Guaytuguza. And all these will cover the cost of the 3.2 billion that we have received from National Treasury during adjustment budget. And in the event where we have not transferred the entire budget, we are negotiating with National Treasury for the rollover of this amount because of these disasters. This, these amounts will be entirely spent on reconstruction and rehabilitation of the infrastructure that has been affected by disaster in those areas. Chairperson, I will stop there and allow through DG for other DGs to come in. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, CFO. I want to just check if um, DDG for corporate services is back, and if you can 
um, respond on the cost of employment question that was raised. I mean, Thank you, DG, and good morning, Chairperson, Honourable Members and colleagues. Um, I think there was only one question from Honourable Opperman about the vacancies. Um, so the department has made significant progress in filling the vacancies that resulted from um, us adopting a new organizational structure last year. Currently, we still have 71 uh, vacancies remaining. Of that 71 vacancies, 62 has already been advertised. The majority of them have been shortlisted, and we are confident that by the end of March, most of those posts, the recruitment process would be completed and we would have appointed people. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Peter. We can, with your permission, Peter, now move on to the operational questions. Uh, specifically linked to the municipalities and the dysfunctional municipalities, with the focus as well on the um, MSIP. Uh, so, if I could please ask um, um, Paul to start, and if Sylvia can also then support him on the MSIP. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, DG, and also good morning to. The Honorable Chairperson and members of, uh, of the Portfolio Committee, and also good morning to the, the Minister, as well as the, the DGs in the meeting, and all the other colleagues that are in attendance. Um, let me <clears throat> start with the uh, questions raised by uh, uh, Member Opperman. Yes, on, on career there, um, it has been a unique challenge in the sense that uh, that municipality for the past two years. Did not have an MF, and uh, uh, and also that the, uh, the the whole functionality functional machinery has not been up and running, uh, uh, despite some of the effort being done by the by the province. And uh, uh, you know, currently up to December, the, the nothing was spent simply because there was no project that we registered at the time. Uh, uh, given the the, 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 uh, the challenges of capacity in the in the municipality, um, I can certainly I can uh, indicate now to the members that um, uh, Coxa has now sent uh, MM who has started now in in January uh, 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 to stabilize uh, the, the the administration of the municipality and uh, our team that is led by Mr. Amadie as well as colleagues from Misa. Assist with now uh, assisting the MM to to really catch up, you know, and uh, see how far they can do uh, to, to try and, uh, and and get some of the spending uh, happening. But we have lost a lot of ground, given all the challenges that have been in the, in the municipality. Um, and that's what I, I, I add from what the, the CFO has has, has has indicated. Um, the the underspending that we are reporting. It, it is um, uh, um, it, it is the, the we have stated the reasons of why the the, the spending is uh, not is, has not been uh, at the desired uh, level. When we are supposed to be at forty percent in terms of as at uh, uh, December, you know, but we were thirty eight point two, you know, uh, spending at the time. Uh, we don't want to mention about other uh, maybe, maybe people that have been in the system or whatever, but uh, as, as at that time, it was the 8.2. That's why we have underachieved. I can uh, in, in, indicate to the members that uh, we are now at 42.65 in January. And then in terms of our timeline, um, uh, in, in at the end of March, we are projecting that we, we, we should have reached uh, 60 percent of the spending. Mind you, uh, members, if I, I can uh, remind you, is that the, the the first part of the of, of, of the financial years from these municipalities is more planning procurement uh, and, and then the, the real you know uh, work start to really to get ramp up in the in, in, in the third term of the municipality uh, I mean in the in the in the yeah it, it's from January up to June that's where a lot of uh, increase of all the spending we will see and as we are projecting for our for our financial year, we still uh, are confident that we should be in a position to, to uh, reach uh, 60% in March, at the end of March, and then uh, by the end of the financial year of the municipalities, we have uh, targeted, the target is 85. We, we are confident that we should be in a position to do that. 
the investment. And um, in terms of the, the support, um, uh, several members have raised the issue as to which are these municipalities where we are supporting, why are they not get, getting out of their conditions, um, uh, where, which one can we uh, uh, cite, you know? Uh, maybe let me again uh, 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 just indicate to the members to say uh, uh, the, the support program that we have currently uh, uh, between ourselves, it is we, the members, or we as a team, that is a collective team between the National Treasury, ourselves, it is also the DBSA, and it is MISA, the provincial official, and COPTA, and, 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 and the Treasury, and also DWS. We are mostly a pack in terms of our work in all these, in most of these municipalities, um, uh, depending. And um, obviously, for us as national, we are focusing on the 64 uh, municipalities across the country. I mean, uh, the 66 across the country, but uh, for the provinces, they, uh, most of them are focusing the support to all the municipalities, uh, but in, in general, but also specific ones in, in particular. So, um, so, so if, if, to, if a municipality is dysfunctional, and we, if you have to be honest, members, uh, you, it takes a year or a minimum of a year to three years to get that municipality out of that situation. That's how that is the reality. Some, uh, some of us have been in that space as acting MMs in, in, in spaces where we had to really uh, get, uh, you know, support the municipality out of that the, 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 the situation that they have. So uh, uh, we can register members. We can register with you some of the uh, the, 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 the successes. Uh, mem member, uh, the one member has been also, also asking about the Mangau and Lekwa. Um, uh, we, we, uh, if we, uh, we can report to you now, is that Lekwa is stabilized. Their, their committees are meeting. The, they are, they are reporting, they are attending all the important uh, obligations, and uh, their only problem is a cash flow. And, uh, and but you you can see uh, there is stability in that municipality. We have given them as MISA a several a, a chief engineer and official to help in the in the in the, in the, in the MMS office. And uh, 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 but we can't say it they are out of there out, out of those challenges. It is it's the game that they are traveling. But what is so encouraging is that there is political stability. The leadership is providing guidance, and uh, we are trying to uh, provide the support from our side. We go to, to Mangaou members, uh, honorable members. Uh, there also, it is under 1397B, that means, but there is an NCRT, the National Cabinet Representative led, I mean, team, and we also have our own officials. Who are seconded from various departments? We have reported to you before about it. there is a, a if you compare where they were a year ago, when we had to when the, the minister announced at, at the end user to say the uh, national government is coming into the space to deal with this thing, I we I can, I can send you to report to you to say there is instruction in terms of, of progress, members. But we cannot say that Mangaum is out of the land, you know. Uh, the, the, the consensus is happening, and, 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 the, and, and the management is, is operating, is tightly operating and supported by the NCRT. And I can report to the, to this, 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 uh, to the member to say, our DG, the deputy minister, continuously go to that metro to engage, to establish and, 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 and get a briefing from the team, both from the NCR team, as well as the management led by that are deployed in that municipality. And, and then we, we, we hope that with the political stability that is going to be unfolding, and, and then we had we have that there might be those changes at the political level, it will enhance the, the, the work that is being done. But we cannot report to you, remember to say, uh, the now is out of the right. It's, 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 a, it's a journey that they are traveling, but we can definitely demonstrate some of the things that has happened from that time up to now. And, uh, and in some cases, some of the challenges that it cannot be faster enough, it's simply because of money that has to be done, and uh, that has been to be imported in that particular municipality. So all I'm indicating is that we have 
uh, instances where there have been this uh, 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 evidence of demonstrating the, the, the successes where we have been. Mugabe has been under one to the ninth, uh, uh, one B, because it's not some state, there is one B. There is an element there now. You know, there might be challenge, but you can see, Sabir, you can see the positions that we feel. Yeah, you can see the others are running in terms of such a you can see the light and the, the channel of the particular inspiration, but we cannot say that it's out of the ground because it is a change. Because what I'm indicating to members is that to a when an inspiration is dysfunctional, it is uh, it is uh, uh, to take it out of that state, it's, it's not something that you can do overnight. That, that's the one, and then and also uh, our minister has already directed us as administration to say, uh, you know, the help, help you when. Uh, you know, when you put a municipality under in, in under section one three nine, it is an ICU state, ICU state. You know, so our ourselves as a department and collectively with everybody else, we are currently strengthening our intergovernmental relations machinery to begin to make sure that, the, that we intensify the support, you know, impetus to these municipality, so that uh, we prevent them from entering into the ICU uh, arena. And that is where we're going to be going in terms of why else we're going to deal with the, we're currently dealing with the, see with this dysfunctional inspiracy. But our energy is going to now to take these ones that are not dysfunctional, to put them to terms and to ensure that where there is uh, any, any, any transgression of any nature, there is consequences and as a, as a department here, if we have to do, we, we are going to, 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 go, to go that route. I just want to uh, sort of explain to members in terms of just the dynamics that we are, are grappling uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, in terms of the work that we are doing. Uh, I mean, in ETEC, in, in I think uh, uh, probably I will ask uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Naifu to talk about the issues of the, uh, the, the MM there in ETEC, but let me also share with the, the members to say we are also seized in ETEC. As a national government uh, in that space, we all know about the, the Ethiopian. They had disasters. They experienced so many disasters, you know, you know, and 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 they continue to live into that, that that situation. And we are with them. There is a national support initiative that we have been by directive of our minister and the minister of of the uh, DWS. We are seized with Ethiopian now to help them to push because in many instances. There are, there's a lot of dynamics that we have to deal with, try and win and lock some of the challenges that are in the space. But we are in, in Ethiopia every two weeks as COPTA, as DWS, as uh, human settlement, as uh, other uh, as national treasury to take them on and also check and make sure that we follow through some of the resolution that we have taken in that, uh, in that metro to make sure that some of these issues that have been raised by members are able to be that, and that is the route we are going to go uh, as, 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 as a collective, as the whole DDM machine start to gain momentum, you know, uh, uh, as we implement this uh, proactive approach of dealing with some of these inequalities that they must never go to ICU uh, uh, at all. I'm going to, to post in some of the other comments were comments, but uh, in terms of the GBV, uh, the one number I talked about IDP. And whether there are indicators on the on the uh, uh, GBV uh, indicators, let me indicate to say there is work that is under uh, underway now between ourselves and the president and the presidency to finalize this this uh, in terms of the uh, ensuring that the IDPs can hit all these uh, indicators uh, as, as as expected and as uh, as, as the, the regulations start us to ensure that all these uh, um, imperatives are covered. In terms of our work, I will just post here, members. Thank you very much. I can then over to the GG and then uh, to our other colleagues. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Chairperson. I just wanted to check if uh, Sylvia wanted to add anything on the MSIP. Uh, thank you very much, G. And good morning, honorable members, Chairperson uh, of the Thank you, DG. No, I think I've, I've mostly been covered um, you know, by responses from Ms. Mohale. 
that you know in, in driving the MSIP process and implementation, uh, you know, that we are following a collaborative approach uh, with all the stakeholders and sector departments to, to obviously attend, you know, to, to the key issues that we have identified in, in the MSIPs. So, um, you know, provinces have, have come to the party and it, have also established, you know, uh, quarterly forums through which we are monitoring uh, with the provincial corporate departments and, and all the relevant stakeholders, uh, national treasury, provincial treasury, uh, the sector departments uh, through which we are then monitoring uh, you know, the performance of uh, in terms of the, the issues that have been captured um, in the support grants. Uh, but as we continue to implement, obviously, the situation at uh, local government level is very fluid, um, um, issues arise. But as we continue to implement and monitor, we, we are also following up on offering up on some of the other issues um, um, that are raised. So maybe just to add that, that those few things. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chairperson. Perhaps just one or two comments on my side around the uh, municipal support intervention plans. Um, I think perhaps the first thing to also uh, say is that the department has less than 500 people in terms of the capacity and what we are required to undertake. If you look at the capacity in the province and you look at the capacity uh, within uh, the district and also within the municipalities, it far exceeds the capacity that the department would actually have. Um, and if you also look at the mandate of the department and what it is that we are required to deliver on, I think we are also very clear from an administrative, administrative should I say, perspective of how that needs to be undertaken. So in the design of the, 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 the frameworks that we come up with, like, for example, the MSIP, we, we make certain that when we want to, to implement such a framework, not only is it done in collaboration, but it is also then uh, tailored or customized to that particular municipality and what it would require and what its needs would be. The key challenge that we also then have with the MSIPs is that they are derived specifically from the states of local government report, which is uh, uh, put together on an annual basis, meaning that the actual response on the MSIP is not then a real time response. And it also then means that um, the fact that it's also derived out of the 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 um, the states of local government report, it also doesn't necessarily coincide with the cycles, uh, the operationalization cycles that we would have between national and the local level. But having uh, pointed that out, what then becomes really important because Honorable Mkalipi asked the question. So in supporting the municipality, what is then contained within an MSIP? Or what does that actually specifically mean? So I was hoping that Sylvia would have then referred to uh, the fact that the outcome of the AG report indicated to us that municipalities were not uh, keeping documents in the way that they should have been. And as such, it resulted in high findings. So within our MSIP, we have actually looked at how it is that we can support municipalities when it comes to record management. We've put together a framework. We've also put together uh, teams locally within each province that would then support the municipalities to look at their record administration. The same on the MSIP, you can also, we also have been assisting with data management. Uh, so we do have a list of things that we, we, we do provide to municipalities that they can touch into or or get into to be able to support themselves administratively or to strengthen their administration. So perhaps we should actually share that MSIP framework uh, just so that it does give a good idea of what, what are the possibilities and what is contained within an MSIP. Uh, I think the other important point uh, perhaps to also just uh, note on the support 
that we provide uh, to municipalities is that we have also identified that there is a gap. And the gap is that if you want to manage something, you must have measures in order to do so. So we have recently looked at uh, compiling a um, municipal assessment. Uh, um, um, I'm, I'm going to call it a report, but it's actually a municipal assessment tool or instrument where we look at all the key uh, um, areas that we had classified within our state of local government report. And we said, what exactly is it that we need to measure in each one of those? So whether it relates to governance and administration, whether financial management, et cetera, we have come up with measures. In fact, we've taken it further to even say, what is it that we should be looking at in local economic development? How is it that we would know that a municipality is do doing well just by these particular indicators? So we've also engaged with municipalities on these and we've engaged with provinces on this. We've received input. input. It's something that we are taking through our minister to cabinet and we want to then implement into the, into the next uh, uh, financial cycle a year uh, for municipalities. Because that will give us a much better sense of of uh, the improvements that we will then see in these dysfunctional municipalities. I, I, I also express the fact that we have the state of local government report that is undertaken on an annual basis. So if you, the, the one that we had taken, the first one we had taken to cabinet was in, in July, 2021. The second one we took to cabinet was in July, 2022. That in those reports, we have also indicated the shifts within our classification or categorization of the municipalities. We had gone to cabinet with 64 dysfunctional municipalities. Of those between ourselves and National Treasury, we had said that 43 of them were financially distressed. And in the following year, we then re, um, uh, uh, reviewed or reassessed based on the classification of the states of local government report. And we indicated that there was an increase uh, in the number of dysfunctional municipalities to 66. However, if you looked at the actual classification, there was a, a quite a big improvement within the KZN area, uh, sorry, province, with more than 10 uh, municipalities that actually did improve based on the, the state of local government uh, classification. So we can also uh, uh, provide those reports uh, to the, the, the portfolio committee, yeah. and we're happy to share that. Uh, Chair, the other point that I thought would be important to note is that, yes, we have tried to uh, uh, set up a strategic uh, session between ourselves and the portfolio committee, uh, specifically on the CWP. We have, between ourselves, communicated. Uh, there have been some dates that have been lobbied, and there have also been some changes to some of the initial dates, but the date now that has been settled uh, through a communication that we've received from the chairperson, I think is between the 28th and the 30th of, of March. Uh, chairperson, I also thought um, first one other point that was raised, which I think we need to enhance or improve, is the point around the 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 citizen let me call it i'm going to call it citizen um or customer service that in other words if you go to a municipality and you go to the front desk of a municipality and you need a service to be rendered to you how is that service then delivered back to you i think that is something that we maybe need to strengthen in our assessment report um uh, because the, the challenge we also have is that Whilst we have classified or categorized uh, um, municipalities in terms of their, their dysfunctionality, at the point of that classification, you will find that we the priorities that are identified in the MSIP are not aligned to the immediate challenges that are happening on the ground. So in other words, when I go to a front desk and I'm trying to pay my electricity bill or my water bill and I'm not getting the service that 
I, I believe I should be getting as a citizen. So I think we need to look at how is that we can strengthen that through our citizen engagement approach and also through, uh, uh, yeah, let me keep it at, at that chair person. Uh, I don't think I can add any more than I've said, Chair, and I hope that we have covered most of the questions as then um, provided to us by the honorable members. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Chair. And good morning to all the honorable members. Uh, I just want to add a few things. Uh, because local government is a different sphere. Sometimes even when you intervene, because a lot of the problems in the municipalities are linked to the interface between the council and the administration. And sometimes that interface is inappropriate. It becomes a big um, scrambled egg. You can't tell who's who. But when you intervene, you still have to get concurrence and cooperation from the council because the interventions get done at an administrative level. And if the council does not cooperate with the intervention, the intervention won't succeed. And so, that's, that's why sometimes you get interventions from province to national that don't work. And, and the, 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 the population, the community can see that there is no co cooperation with the intervention. And that's why sometimes they then ask for the dissolution of the, of the council. So th those are some of the problems that we encounter. Um, and I also want to talk a bit about, I think probably Honorable Khalifa talked about why, what is the problem at the municipalities, is it capacity, why they are not spending their big grants. And most of the municipalities do not have the appropriate personnel. For instance, for, pro for projects, you need to plan, you need engineers to, to, to do the specifications and the, and, the, and, the, and the planning of the execution. And most of the municipalities don't have registered engineers. And so you find that that's where the problem comes. The, the capacity at the municipality. But as we, as we are not in the meetings, we are traveling, we were in a summit for skills revolution. And one of the things we had to invest it is EFT, FETs, CITAS, and a lot of other stakeholders, that's private sector in this summit because we were trying to look at what can be done, not only by government, but generally. One of the things that they said was that even though universities are producing a bit more engineers a year now, but less and less are getting registered because it, it, it is a problem that you study engineering theoretically, which is not a theoretical profession, it's a practical profession, but you study. And then after you have studied, you must now get to go and do your practicals. And in the rural areas, there aren't big companies that can take them. So a lot of these engineers have certificates, but they are not registered engineers. So that's a big problem at the municipality level. And of course, 
planners, the same, the same go for city planners and so on. And sometimes, even when there is an engineer, the municipalities prefer still to use consultants instead of using the resident engineer. And so some of the engineers then leave because they don't have, um, they, they are not doing what they should be doing. So yes, there's a problem of capacity in the municipalities insofar as implementing the infrastructure programs. So I thought I should just add that. And that's why we are trying to negotiate to say, if a municipality cannot spend, why can't we as national or province or province be allowed to assist them to implement? Because at the moment you can't just go and implement a project in a municipality. So those are the discussions that are happening precisely to try and see if we can um, make a difference in that, that area because people do need services. The money gets given to municipality, but municipality doesn't have the capacity to utilize it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, I am sure um, MISA and uh, DTA, there might still be issues that you would want to respond to if there, if there were such questions. Honorable Chair from DTA side, if I may. Yes, please. Yes, uh, Honorable Chair, there was a, a question from uh, Honorable Oberman. Uh, which was about the uh, activities of the Commission uh, on Koi uh, and Sun uh, Matters. Uh, and the issue was about uh, the uh, uh, program to, of outreach to provinces uh, and how far that program is. And um, so just to indicate that the, the program uh, started last year. So all provinces were covered uh, 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 during 2022, uh, so between uh, uh, the 12th of April and uh, 2022 and the 13th of June 2022, the Commission and Quine Sun Matters managed to reach all uh, provinces with their, with their, with their outreach, uh, but with an understanding obviously that uh, it will be an ongoing, an ongoing uh, activity, especially as they receive applications. Uh, they indicate that they have received 10 applications across the country thus far. Uh, and as the, uh, they are interrogating the applications, they have found a need to uh, have further engagements with, with applicants. So uh, it, during the course of, of this month, uh, March, starting tomorrow, they will then have a, a, a workshop in, 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 in the Western Cape uh, with, the application, with the applicants and then followed by another one with applicants in the in the Eastern Cape, uh, and they will do so uh, with other applicants as they uh, as they scrutinize their their applications. Uh, so as a result, they, they have not as yet made any recommendations to the minister for recognition uh, because they are still interrogating the the applications that uh, uh, that, that that have been received. Um, there was also a question from, from the honourable Osman uh, on the involvement of municipalities in customary initiation, uh, that there are municipalities which indicate that they don't have a mandate uh, to be, be involved in, uh, in customary initiation. Uh, well, the, the, the tradition, the, uh, the, 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 the customary initiation act uh, does, does not instruct municipalities to, uh, to be involved. Uh, but what it does is that in the constitution of provincial initiation coordinating committees. Uh, the act provides for representatives of municipalities. So as the province constitute their PICC, uh, there is a provision in the uh, CIA uh, that representatives of municipalities, uh, especially those municipalities uh, where customary initiation is practiced, 
that they, they, they should be represented in the, in the PICC. But also what the Act does, it, it uses a, a, a cooperative governance approach. Whilst it does not instruct municipalities to do certain things, it uses the formulation of May. Uh, so it says um, uh, national, provincial, and, and local government may enter into partnerships with each other uh, with the express purpose of supporting uh, the customary practice uh, of initiation. They may also, even municipalities may enter into partnerships with the, uh, 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 um, uh, the principals uh, of, of customary initiation schools uh, for purposes of ensuring safer uh, initiation. Uh, but also, it, it also provides in the legislation that they may enter into a partnership to enable the municipality to provide certain services to the uh, customary initiation schools. So the Act does not necessarily instruct the municipalities to do certain things, uh, but is there a provision that enables and, and can facilitate the involvement of municipalities? Yes, most certainly uh, that is provided for uh, in the Act in terms of the section that deals with roads and responsibilities. And I think a good example in this regard, Honorable Chair, would be if, 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 if we go back to the report that uh, our colleagues in the Eastern Cape presented to the committee last week about the, the summer initiation. Uh, in that report, there's a detailed breakdown which shows in each area uh, how the municipality came on board, how the municipality came on board and the role uh, that they were able to play. So, so I think the, the, there is that space uh, and, and that provision to facilitate the involvement uh, of municipalities in the, uh, in the practice. The, the Honourable Booms are asked um, uh, uh, two questions. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the, the, the last question which he raised, which is about um, uh, the, the alignment of the uh, Provincial Initiation Committee, Coordinating Committee of the Eastern Cape with what the Customary Initiation Act says. Uh, and Honourable Members would recall that the, uh, the, 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 the Act requires a representative a provincial initiation coordinating committee, as I indicated earlier, that would include representatives of municipalities, representatives of relevant sector departments, such as health uh, and so on, the police, uh, but that in the Eastern Cape, the way it is constituted now, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's more of a, of a provincial cabinet committee because it's constituted through uh, various uh, uh, MECs. Um, now here we, Again, just, just in terms of the, the detailed report that was provided by the Eastern Cape to this committee last week, uh, this, this particular question was also raised. Uh, and and the, the response from the Eastern Cape, which is uh, our understanding as well, is that they, 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 they have started a process of making sure that they revisit the constitution or the composition of the PICC so that it is constituted in line with the provision of the Customary Initiation Act. Uh, so as, as recently as last week, that's, that's what they indicated to, to us in the committee, that they have started that process uh, of, 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 of ensuring that uh, there is uh, indeed uh, alignment. Um, but I think I would, I would propose, uh, Honorable Chair, in terms of the, the other question that the Honorable Booms are raised on the, on the particular uh, municipality where there is traditional leadership, uh, I think Honorable Pumza says traditional and quiescent leadership um, uh, where they, they are in conflict with the, with the municipality uh, that, that perhaps uh, outside the meeting, we just get more details on, uh, on that so that we are uh, able to work with our provincial counterparts to intervene uh, in the matter. So for example, if it is, if it is quiescent uh, leadership, uh, then we'll have to check it because it means that they are not recognized as yet because they are process of application is being dealt with by the commission. So we'll have to establish if they have applied, uh, if they have applied uh, and have not been recognized yet, then it means they should be amongst those that the commission will engage with uh, uh, when they look at the applications. Um, but if it is traditional leadership, again, the province will have to engage with the province to see if they are recognized by the, by the premier, if it's senior traditional leadership, uh, and, 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 and if not, uh, then, uh, what, what are the, the, the obstacles to us that if they are, then we'll have to understand why is it that the municipality is not allowing them uh, to participate as provided for 
in the Municipal Structures Act. So with your permission, Chairperson, I would have to comment that we, we just get more information outside the meeting from the Honorable Ngumza uh, so that we are able to get to, to the bottom of this uh, and, 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 and intervene in co collaboration with our provincial counterparts. Uh, thank, thanks, Chair, Honorable Chairperson. Those are the, the issues that were raised in respect to the presentation of uh, traditional affairs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bimba. Thank, thanks, Chair. Uh, there were no specific questions uh, directed at Misa's uh, presentation. Of course, we would have uh, responded or assisted the department in responding to the question relating to MIT spending. I think colleagues have sufficiently responded uh, in terms of uh, the support that uh, we are providing uh, in municipalities, in particular with regard to MIG. We have our engineers supporting. However, the challenge, as colleagues have indicated, uh, really lies on the performance with regard to the finance and procurement side of things in municipalities, really hampering our support as well. But uh, we can also prepare a detailed uh, a report that get onto what exactly the support entailed with regard to the municipalities we supported with re in following to ensure that municipalities spend on make. But colleagues have responded sufficiently, sir. And minister also has uh, responded and uh, indicated what we are now busy with to ensure that those municipalities with perennial problem of underspending uh, as government nationally we do intervene by directly uh, implementing projects on their behalf. Thanks, Jefferson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Minister. I see your hand. Oh, is thank it, you, uh, Chair. Just a, okay. Just a small point on the initiation issues. I think municipalities are supposed to be helpful. Uh, and uh, I know in the Western Cape, for instance, one of the honorable members called me, there was a crisis of some sort, which I won't bother you uh, in terms of the details, but we engaged this, the, this, the Metro and the matter was resolved. So I think when there's an issue, uh, municipalities should be engaged if they need to assist and they will as they have to assist uh, if it's within their their area of jurisdiction and they do. So I think sometimes they may not know if there's a problem, or if they know, uh, if you prod them that there's a problem, let's resolve it. They do. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... Uh, honorable members, if there are any follow-ups, uh, I will take them. But if there are none, uh, we will be coming closer to closing the meeting. Uh, I will see hands. If there are no hands, then I will assume uh, that that covers uh, all of us. Uh, for now, let me uh, uh, indicate that, uh, yes, we did have some problems when we started. And uh, I think uh, what we should appreciate is that we are at this stage now. Uh, the focus was on the third quarter performance. And the intention of uh, doing this by the committee it's because we earlier contracted when we started the year. So it's more helping on monitoring whether we are able to realize the targets that we set for ourselves. And if there are any gaps, obviously the department must go back and plan as to how do we close those gaps. There are specific areas uh, where I think all of us 
we have interest in so far as this affect communities where we come from. It's uh, under expenditure. So I, I assume all of, when I say all of us, it starts with the minister, deputy ministers, accounting officers to make sure that uh, resources that have been allocated for areas that we identified and said will achieve them uh, are achieved. So under expenditure, even if it is at the level, I think now the more, fo more focus was on the issues of uh, the grants for municipalities. So I think let's develop an approach that says we must minimize uh, that. And uh, so for now, one would say on average, we are on course in terms of uh, realizing the targets that we planned for the third quarter. If there are any gaps, I think we have all identified them. There must be plans to deal with that. Uh, that would be my comments. If there are any minister you'd want to say before we close, Oh, the minister is gone. Honorable members, uh, we... I'm, I'm, I'm here, but I was just uh, cut off for a, oh, a moment. Okay. So I don't know what you wanted me to do. No, I didn't want you to do anything. All I'm saying, we have identified gaps in terms of performance for this third quarter. We expect uh, you and your team to work out a plan to close those gaps. And I think I just talked about under expenditure. Uh, that is something that we didn't wish to, especially when it relates to infrastructure. But I was uh, then saying the ball is in the court of the department now. We will only meet now when the year is, is ending after the 31st of March. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes. We'll hear you and thank you very much. We'll do our best. Okay, then that closes the meetings, uh, honorable members. Thank you very much for the session. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm back. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to all the members. Bye bye. Recording stop.